When I first met our next guest, I was so moved by her story that I wanted to make sure that our real life family got to know the Miss Pennsylvania, Tiffany Seitz too. She has a powerful message championing adoption advocacy, restoring hope and transforming lives. Tiffany, welcome to Real Life. I wanna just like come over there and hug on you. We love you so much and we are so proud of you. But you have just a dynamic story. When I heard this, I was very captivated and I just want you to share your story. I know we have some pictures, so we'll try to show your pictures as you're talking, but uh, share with our family. Absolutely. Yeah, so you know, one of the things that I get to do as Miss Pennsylvania throughout my year is to promote my uh, platform and social impact initiative of adoption advocacy. And it is a story that is near and dear to my heart for so many reasons, but mostly because it's personal for me. I've gone yeah. through it, I've seen it work both ways. You know, I have three older siblings that are fostered and I am the only member of my family that's adopted. Um, but I was adopted when I was two and a half years old mm -hmm. and that was after my parents got a call um, about me as an infant being extremely ill um, because of being born cocaine positive. And I was given a two week life expectancy. Wow. And they told me that in the event that I lived beyond this two week life expectancy that there would be a severe array of health complications that would follow me into my adulthood and really it wouldn't be worth my parents while to adopt me. And I think, you know, sitting here with you today really puts into perspective for me God's hand in my life in, in every possible way. But, you know, I tell that story, you know, just to show what God has done because I'm not sitting here by my own will or because of the things that I did or my parents will. He, he wanted me here and he gave me this story to share with people and I am so thrilled that I get to do that this morning. I am blessed that I have a platform such as the Miss Pennsylvania organization to, to share this story on a statewide platform and it's reached so many people. I had the, an opportunity to be in People Magazine with this story and it, wow. has, it has reached so many people but what I want people to know about this story most importantly is that it's not me that got myself here. It's been the Lord's hand in my life. He has been guiding my steps since the first day that he saw me. And, you know, granted, where we start does not dictate where we'll end up. That's right. And a lot of people said, I had a lot of doctors tell me that I wouldn't, I wouldn't end up. I wouldn't. Right. And, you know, to be sitting here today and to be representing my state, had the opportunity to represent my state at Miss America is truly That's an right. honor, a privilege, and one that I would not have been able to do if it wasn't for the love and kindness and the selflessness of my parents just answering that call and, yeah. and being the servants of the Lord that they were called to be. You know, they were, ultimately they were obedient and that's why me and my brothers are here today. So it's an that honor. That is amazing. So I, I love pictures. Can, can we look at a picture? Oh my of gosh, of course. Your mom and your yes. dad. Oh, there you are. Yes, who, that's who me are you with? and my brother and I'm in my Whitney Houston wig. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that real hair? It is not real hair. <laughs> Yes, and those are me and my parents. That was my adoption day in yes. March of 1998. That's two and a half. That is beautiful. Okay. And, and then there's me just being me in, in sparkles and feathers. <laughs> <laughs> you were born for this girl. That I was. Oh, yes. in this moment. Talk, yes. talk to us about this moment. It is here. a powerful moment. You know, that's one. It was one of the things that I was not expecting to happen to me. But that day is the day that changed my life, and it's the day that brought me here with you. It's, right. it's awesome and it's, it's truly, I, I love looking at that picture because it's just, it's, it's awesome. It, it's a testament to so many things that I got to do. And that's me at Miss America. That was my, a photo from my talent routine. Awesome, I watched it. Yes, it oh my gosh, thank you, oh, thank, thank you. you. And that's me giving my social impact pitch about adoption. That was another opportunity that I got at Miss America mm -hmm. to share my story and share why adoption is, is personal and important to me. Right, right. Yeah. It's just beautiful and seeing your life like and seeing too like here's a cream family that adopts this beautiful brown little girl. And what do you say to people like we got to do this thing together like the race is together and what does that mean to you. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I, I tell people, you know, I have another African American sibling but you know for the most part mm -hmm. my family is Caucasian and you know, I, I look at my family and there are other people that look at my family sometimes and, you know, <laughs> it doesn't add up when you look at us. It doesn't add up when you look at our family picture, but really it's, it's not about adding up at all. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, one thing I love to tell people is that love knows no color. That's right. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. um, 
Because Jesus loves us all. That's Seriously. Right. And as cliche of an answer as that might sound like, it's, it's the truth. He, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, and, that, and that's one thing I'm so grateful that my parents have shown me, you know, the love and respect that I deserve because I, I think, right. you know, as a, as a country right now, we are so, and, and have always been really very racially divided. Right. And, um, you know, that's, it's the things like this that can bring us together. And when we that's realize right. that, you know, just to love one another, it's a simple command in the Bible. And at times it's easier said than done, you know, we're human, but yes. at the end of the day, that's really what we need to hone in on. And we need to focus on is just loving one another and being there for one another, because above all, that's what we're called to do. That's right. And that's what I see. So in the beginning, like going back to your, when you were born and your, um, health, mm -hmm. how did your mom and dad, like what, what transpired? How did they help you to get through the health struggles or what did God do? Did he heal you? Like, right. Well, you know, again, it, it just came down to that two week diagnosis. I mean, they, they didn't give me much beyond that to live. Right. And so it really came down to the fact, you know, a, a loving mother, a loving father. I think love can get you a long way as well as God's hand and his healing. Right. Um, but, you know, really it was just a lot of, you know, nursing me back to the health that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the best I could do because really it wasn't, nobody knew. Nobody yeah. knew what life was going to look like for me beyond the two weeks and, you know, 24 years later, here I am. Right. And this is what life looks like. And I'm so grateful that, you know, my parents were mindful and they were insightful when taking mm -hmm. care of me because really I think at the end of the day, that's really what did it. You know, God wanted me here for a purpose and he preserved my life beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the cocaine positivity and mm -hmm. that two week life expectancy. You know, God wanted me here yes. and there's nothing that's going to interfere with that plan if that's where he wants you. Amen. So your parents that adopted you were believers. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so you were raised in a Christian home. I was. And what does your moment where you met Jesus intimately look like? I remember when I was in, I was in middle school, you know, that's a rough time for, right. you know, kids in general. It's, it, it's a really interesting time to be navigating anything. Mm -hmm. And I remember my parents having a conversation with me and they said, you know, I had grown up in the church, so it's really, it's all I ever knew. Right. And, you know, I remember them sitting me down and having a conversation with me saying, you know what, Tiffany, if, if faith is something that you're passionate about, then it's something that you have got to pursue on your own. You know, it's, right. it's not something that you can just ride our coattails and just, you know, just, right. just do it because we do it. Mm -hmm. And that was really the, the point that drove it home for me when I was in seventh grade. And, you know, I'd been going to the youth camps and youth retreats and conventions every year, mm -hmm. you know, but that's really the moment that it got real for me. And that's when I knew I wanted to be serious about Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not something that I ever really didn't want to be, mm -hmm. but I realized when they made that point to me that said, you know, this is, this has to be your endeavor. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really when it got real for me. And it, it's been that way ever since, you know, I have loved mm -hmm. my devotion time. I have loved reading the word and, you know, it's the Bible is one of those books that you can read and you will find something new in it every single time you read it. It's a right. book that never changes, but you will find something new that you did not see before, rest assured, every single time. And the things that you have seen already, you already know, you right. know, it, it's just going to drive it home for you even more. And so, you know, getting, getting serious about that faith really it was the turning point in my life. And it's, it's, it's been awesome. And I'm so glad that I've been able to take this aspect of my life with me into my years, Miss Pennsylvania. That's beautiful. All right, so if you want mine, because I believe we have audience people that, uh, you know, they're watching and maybe their beginnings wasn't so good either. And they're at a place like, well, this is where I came from. I don't know that God could ever do that. But your story tells me that all things are really possible with God. So if you wouldn't mind just looking in that camera and just speaking to that individual, maybe praying for them, whatever you feel in your heart. Absolutely. You know, I, I love to think of Jesus' beginning. Jesus' beginning was in a stable surrounded by animals. Right. And they didn't have room at an inn for him. But he's the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. And, you know, I, that doesn't look like a promising beginning, but, you know, look at where he ended up and look at what he's done for us. He's done for me. He's done it for you. And, you know, my life is also a product of that as well. You know, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, you know, the, those things that other people put on you, it's what God's will is and nothing. The devil can try. 
he's a worthy adversary, but he will not inter he will not interfere in God's plan because God's plan is meant for you. And whatever that plan looks like, it's going to be what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And it does not matter what people say. Where we start does not dictate where we'll end up. And my life is proof of that. And I am happy to share that with anybody who needs to hear it today. Tiffany, thank you so much. And I know that that was encouraging to you. I can hardly wait to see what God's going to do in and through you. You've got to make sure that you write these things down and let us know. Write in or call in.